Hello everybody, Akamatsu here. With 2021 over and done with, it's now time for me to talk about my favorite games that were released in the year of 2021. As I was coming up with ideas around this video, how to do the structure, I was having a hard time fitting all the games that I wanted to in just one list. So this time around, I'm going to be doing a bunch of games for this video, it's going to be my favorite video games that released in 2021 or re-released in 2020. Then I will be coming out with another video called my favorite games that I played in 2021 overall, whether it was a game from the year 2021 or prior. I feel like that's a more accurate representation of my total feelings of my favorite games in 2021 and i don't think i could do it any other way and feel good about it so there's gonna be that there's gonna be more videos to come about the things that i disliked as well for now let's just focus on the task at hand and let's go over my favorite games that came out in 2021 all that said there were so many games that i enjoyed that came out last year that it was hard to only fit 10 so i do have some honorable mentions now, The Great Ace Attorney Chronicle. In about, I think, 2019, I got around to playing the first Ace Attorney when they had their re-release of the first three games, and I had a great time. We played the first two games. I didn't get to finish the second game before I decided to move on to something else, but I enjoyed the experience. And when they advertised the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, I was like, you know what? Hey, why not? Let's dive into this. And I'm glad I did. It was a very enjoyable experience for these games that I believe were not available before outside of the East. So it was really cool to play them and see all the differences that the series evolved through. As again, the prior ones that came out, I think 2019, I think, were the original games. And this was games that were released later in the series. So there was a lot of new mechanics in the game, like the jury system, to animations in court, how they've been expanded and stuff, and the sequences outside of the court cases where you investigate and stuff, the showdowns with the Holmes guy. It was just a great time all around. Unfortunately, I was not able to finish it, and so I do hope I find time to be able to go back and finish it someday. I do look forward to that, but it was a great experience and one of my favorite games that released in 2021. Scarlet Nexus. Now, originally when I played Scarlet Nexus on stream, I liked it, but I disliked it. I had my issues with the game. I know it's kind of funny seeing as it's on one of my favorite games on the list. But why is that? Well, I stopped playing it because I felt like it's one of those streamer moments where I felt like I was boring people, I guess. It's a hack and slash game and I guess I found it uh, pretty hard to make these games, that game kind of entertaining. While I found it interesting, I didn't really feel like it was entertaining. And there was moments in the game that were kind of annoying me a little bit with the final dungeon crawl to the end, I guess. I got a little annoyed and some little things with the side missions. But I came back to it a couple months later and I started playing it off stream and it was great. I picked it up and it's just one of those games that I feel for me was just better played by myself with no audience like before I started broadcasting. It was a great time. I was able to dive and enjoy the new content that was added in the meantime that I left. It wasn't anything like uh, that affect the main storyline. It was all side content and story related, mainly costumes and stuff, but I... I got to play the game with more at my own pace and I enjoyed it for what it was. I got to play the, the guy character. I played the girl on stream, which not really too many differences between them outside of different animations. Overall, I had a great time with the hack and slashness. I had a, it was a typical anime game. So there's anime tropes all over the place. It had my favorite anime tropes in it. The characters were really great to learn the struggles. The gameplay was a lot of fun and flashy. Now, I do, while it is on my greatest games that I played, I do wanna share the good with the bad. In this particular game, I do think one of the bads, and I think it's only fair to talk about it, 
is that I wish you could play as the other teammates on the team. This is a game where you only play as the main character and like the other teammates are shortcuts pretty much to their special abilities. Really wish you could play as the other teammates in this game. I think it would have made it an even better experience and I wish the side missions were a little bit better. But all in all, I had a great time playing it and I went back and I finished it off stream and I'm glad I did because it's nice for me to actually change my opinion about something because I changed my environment. So that was Scarlet Nexus. It's Resident Evil 8 Village. And this one's... I don't know what to say about this, if I gotta be honest. I'm a big Resident Evil fan. If you come by my Twitch streams, you know, if you ask me, you probably, or you've been around my streams before, you probably already know. I'm always interested in the next Resident Evil game, and that was not different from Resident Evil Village. I was getting excited because it's always exciting for a new RE game. Now, I am perfectly honest, the last couple of Resident Evil games that have come out have not been my favorite, seven and stuff like that and i was not really a huge huge fan of the four through six i know call me a boomer ah. anyways i did have a fun time when i played through eight i played through it multiple times i tried to get all the trophies i ended up not getting all the trophies i'm missing like two and i think they're mercenary related but i did everything i did multiple playthroughs of it i did it on the hardest difficulty in a new game which was brutal the environments in the game are pretty it made me like ethan who i originally despised in seven i could not stand that guy eight made me like him actually there was a lot of things they did good in this game there was also a lot of things they did in this game that again was not my favorite i don't think it's changed my opinion that the later resident evil games are just not my favorite games but it was a good game and i had fun with it it changed my opinion about a character that I normally dislike. Boss characters were interesting. The setting was interesting. Their lore was weird. <laughs> but overall, I had a great time playing the game, and that's about all I can ask from a Resident Evil game at this point. I think the series is probably moving past my general interest and what I like about Resident Evil, but it's always great to enjoy one. But I didn't like the main boss. Now, the last honorable mention before we get into the top 10 is a game I felt like I needed to mention. Far Cry 6. Now, this is my first Far Cry, and that's probably why it's on the list for those reasons. I've heard the rhetoric that once you play one Far Cry game past three, you've played them all this is my first one i don't have that i had a blast with far cry 6 it's probably and i've been saying this and we'll get into it in my least favorite games of 2021 video but i played a certain game before this that when i went to go play far cry 6 it probably made it even better far cry 6 for me was just stupid fun it was chaotic it was buggy there was things that just didn't work see it's not the most polished game in the world sometimes the ai is stupid Sometimes it just doesn't look the greatest. A lot of the time it actually does. It looks beautiful. There's a lot of, you know, 15 identicals, fetch quests and stuff like that and upgrades that are kind of meaningless and stuff like that. But I enjoyed it for what it was. I did everything in the game except the post-game content. I did everything in the game prior to being in game, I guess I should say. And I had a great time. It was chaotic fun. It wasn't a game that I was playing to be immersed in the storyline. Although I think they did a good job with the, the atmosphere and everything around it, I do wish the main bad guy was in the game more than what he was, seeing as that was their main selling point for the game and the advertisements, and that worked for me. I was pretty excited to play this game because of the advertisements, and because I've been trying to try out Ubisoft franchises from last year and this year that I never played, you know, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While I did play Watch Dogs 1, I played Watch Dogs Legion and played Far Cry, which I've never had. I never played Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, and I wanted to try that. So I was looking forward to this game, and it didn't disappoint me. I had a great time. I think I played it like 10 days on the stream, and every day was fun. And that's all I can ask from a video game is to have fun, and I did. I don't think I'm going to dive in the season's past because it's about the bad guys in the prior games. And I think it's probably better for me to play those games first. But for what I played, Far Cry was great, so I had to put it here on the honorable mention. 
Now, honorable mentions are done, so we can now dive into the top 10. Again, just to reiterate, these are video games that were released in 2021, were re-released in 2021. So starting off in number 10, Ghost of Tsushima's Iki Island DLC. Now, Ghost of Tsushima itself came out in 2020. The Iki Island DLC came out in 2021. This game has shocked me so many times. Someone in my stream was talking about and asking me while I was playing it the original time, did I think it would get a multiplayer? I said no. They came out with a multiplayer. <laughs> and then a year later after the release date, bam, they drop an expansion on us or a DLC, whatever you want to call it. Who, I don't think anyone guessed this was coming. They just keep on delivering with this game and it's good, it, it, it's good. It's not as long as the main campaign. They said it's about as long as one of the individual acts, I guess you can say. And yeah, I agree, it is. The stuff they add in it is is great. There's an enemy that was added that switched you between your stances and it kept you on your toes and it was great. They added new horse abilities. They added new tails, which were really cool. A bunch of new kind of side missions for you to do. And I got lost in the archery one. And it was just great. Ghost of Tsushima was already a great game. It was my favorite game of 2021. And I was just happy to dive into it again. With this announcement, I was ecstatic and it didn't disappoint me. I plan on doing a full playthrough someday in the future on my PlayStation 5 now, now that I have one, I'm going through the full game with the DLC. I just, I can't wait to replay this game. It's been a blast. It was great. I had an amazing time. If I had to say anything bad about the game, maybe the, the main bad guy could have been more present or interesting, but in the all scopes of the DLC, the DLC was great and I just had a fantastic time. With it. So number 10 was Ghost of Tsushima's Iki Island. Monster Hunter Rise for the Nintendo Switch. I love the world. <laughs> world was my first Monster Hunter game. My first official one. My first Monster Hunter experience was Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker with the Monster Hunter crossover missions if you ever played them. You should go check them out. They're pretty cool. Monster Hunter Rise, I was ecstatic for it. I even told myself that I was going to become a Monster Hunter streamer when this game came out. Sadly, that didn't happen. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the time that I did spend in Monster Hunter Rise, I thought was great. Did I like it as much as I did World? Probably not. I don't know if that is because this is my second Monster Hunter experience and it's not like a drastically different thing. I'm not really sure, but I ended up not spending as much time. And I think the general consensus in the community is just that overall, there's just a lack of as much to do in Rise. But for what was there, I had an amazing time. I was a heavy bow gun and light bow gun main in Monster Hunter World. I switched over the hammer and rise to, you know, new breath of fresh air. And man, is hammer so much fun in rise. Impact crater in that game, when you land it, it feels amazing. When you, oh, it feels so good. The wire bug moves in it just add a whole new level of speed to the game from you need to get knocked down on the ground, wire bug out of the way to get back up immediately. The new moves, the wire bug moves, there's a bunch of them for each weapon that you can, and you can unlock some more throughout various means throughout the game. It looks really good for a Switch game. Obviously it's a Switch game, so it's not as graphically fidelity as World is or as, as lush as it is, but that's okay with me. The gameplay is still fun and it still looks pretty good for a Switch game. Just what they offered was really good in the game. The setting was cool. The flagship monster with Magnamala was really cool. The theme is cool. The new monsters were fun to fight. What is it? The kaiju references for the monsters or inspiration for the monsters was great. It was just a fun time. I had a great time. Unfortunately, I didn't put as much time in the world as I did Rise, but they do have a new expansion pack coming out in this year in 2022 called Sunbreak. I'm looking forward to trying that out. So 
I cannot jump right back in the more rise. I literally play it almost every night before I go to bed in handheld mode. It's like my put me to sleep game. I know that sounds bad, but that's not what it, it means. So number nine was Monster Hunter Rise. Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water or Maiden of Black Water. I keep putting the the in there. Now, this is the game that made me change the title to re-release in 2021. I was offered a key by Techcom to play this. I originally was not going to play it, but they reached out to me and offered me a key. And I'm glad I got to experience this game that I was going to avoid. This was fantastic take on a horror game, in my opinion. I have never been interested in the Fatal Frame series at all. I know of it vaguely. I knew there was multiple games and I knew they revolved around ghosts. And that's why I was not interested in it because I personally find ghosts to be corny if it's not Ghostbusters. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just don't like ghosts. I don't like paranormal activity or anything like that. But going in the Fatal Frame, I was trying to be optimistic and I'm glad I tried it. This is a refreshing horror game. It is not your typical horror game experience. It's not really a walking sim. Although I guess you could say it has similarities in some places like that. You take pictures of ghosts and you damage them with your camera in these games. And there's different types of cameras because there's different characters you play as in this game. And they all venture to this mountain that its lore is just so rich and depressing. This is a very depressing game. And that's why I like it. It's overall tone, it nails it. It is very dark. It is very depressing. It is very atmospheric. What it's trying to do, it does well. The characters are your typical kind of horror anime characters where they're very off, I guess you could say, and they don't really talk a whole lot. They're very expressive lists or extra expressive lists, but that's okay with me. The overall lore of everybody's character and their involvement with the mountain and not only the characters you play as but the people in the ghosts they have backstories too and it's tied into a gameplay mechanic where you get to learn about their their backstories it's just a very depressing very atmospheric game and i was hooked the entire time i was playing it it made me go back and buy the first three games on my ps3 <laughs> so they made me a fan I'm so glad that I was able to play this game. Thanks Techcom for reaching out to me and offering me the key to play this game. I, I, I appreciate it. You opened my eyes to a series that I potentially was gonna pass by. So coming in at number eight was Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water. Thought it was great. back for blood and i felt like i had to put this on there i had to i put in a hundred hours of this game and i had a blast with it very rarely on my stream do i get to play games with my community because i play a lot of single player video games and this was a game that i got to play with some members of my community and that was great it was nice to have that experience i don't get to have that too often and back for blood was great i was never really a huge big left for dead fan i did play one and two on the xbox 360 which i guess that's not the best way to experience those games especially now i never knew how big the modding community for these games or the community in general for these games were till I started streaming. I had no idea. Initially, this was another game that I was not going to try out. This is going to be a reoccurring theme, by the way. This is the second game on the list that's like this. I was not going to try out Back for Blood. While I did enjoy Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, when I played the first beta of Back for Blood, I didn't really enjoy it. It was very bare bones and I didn't like the aesthetic of the infected. I forget what they're called. The second beta rolled around a couple months later or more than a couple months later and they added some more elements to the game in it. And that is where I changed my mind and I had fun with it. I played it for about 10 hours and I had, I was like, you know what, this is great. So I ended up buying the game and I had a blast. I played mainly the melee character, which is absolutely fun. I had so much fun just murdering zombies and rampages and stuff. I played the doctor class. I played shotguns, focus, assault rifle, focus. But my most favorite part about this game is the card system. And for me, this is what offered a level of replayability 
that I did not have in Left 4 Dead. The card system was so much fun to build a deck and improve on it. And just over and over and over again, getting more points to improve on it, to make that perfect deck, to make your character just invincible. It was so great to destroy things as Holly with with my melee deck like a mad like a mad lad. It was so much fun. And then when I went over to randoms or we needed a medic, I would switch over to my doc set, and it was really great and satisfying to play doc and you know feel like I was doing my role. I was contributing to the team and I was doing my role fittingly. I really enjoyed the card system that they implemented into this game. I thought it was fantastic. I can't wait till the new stuff comes out in 2022. I bought the season's pass on the last Steam winter sell, so I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, overall great time with Back for Blood. So number seven was Back for Blood. Coming in at number six is another game I wasn't going to play initially. I told you, reoccurring theme, and it's it's not over yet. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know what it was about 2021, but it was filled with a bunch of games that came out that I initially was just not interested in. And Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was that game. They showed it at E3 2021 for the first time, and I think everybody was rolling their eyes. At least everybody I talked to was rolling their eyes at this game. It just seemed like most people were like, oh God. And you know what it was? It was Marvel's Avengers. Marvel's Avengers left a bad taste in so many people's mouth that it was just like, ugh. And I didn't even play Marvel's Avengers. It's safe to say, I was not looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy. I was just, I didn't have any confidence in it. And boy, I'm glad I played it. Now, special shout out to Square Enix for reaching out to me and offering me a key for this game as well. I don't know what it was about 2021, but a bunch of companies saw value in me and they reached out to me. I mean, I, don't ask me. I was so flabbergasted, little me, thank you, because this was one of the best games that came out last year easily. The dialogue and banter between the characters is hands down the best thing about this game. The writers for this game are a master class of creating interesting characters and dialogue between characters and giving chemistry. I was hooked on every piece of dialogue these characters were saying. I wanted to hear and scourge the game for every inch of dialogue they were saying. I was reloading the game to not miss dialogue. I was trying to find all the things so we can get the extra mission so we can explore the dialogue and get the characters. They did such a good job with the dialogue in this game. Now with everything good, there's bad, and that's the combat. <laughs> Just like Scarlet Nexus I said before, this is another game where you only play as the main character, Peter Quill, and basically it's hot keys for your teammates' special abilities, but they go a step further and they interact in the environment. A little bit more than Scarlet Nexus did, but those two games have pretty similar structures in terms of combat. The problem is that the combat gets kind of stale after a while. And again, this is where I wish you could play as Gamora, Rat, Root, Rocket. And I feel like this game would have been a top three or top two or even the game of the year for a lot of people. The gameplay is the biggest amper of this game. And it's not terrible gameplay either. It's fine. There are some collision issues, sure. Or some like, you know, lack of polish with it, sure. That if they did it a little bit better, it'd be great. But it was fantastic writing. The story was great too, but it was mainly the characters and their interactions between each other that I absolutely adored. This to me is Guardians of the Galaxy. This cast right here. The movies were great. This is even better, even better so good i played it in streamer mode where i didn't even get to listen to the licensed soundtrack and everybody has told me i need to play this game again off stream with the licensed soundtrack but even with that it was such a good game don't sleep on marvel's guardians of the galaxy if you haven't played it it's very good Persona 5 Strikers, a game we played very early in the year. Persona 5 Strikers is a game I was actually looking forward to a lot. I love Persona 5. I love Persona 5 Royal. And Strikers was just more Persona 5, and I just couldn't wait for it, and it delivered. 
But the biggest thing it delivered on was the worry factor that I think some people had, which was Persona, a turn-based RPG, getting turned into a Dynasty Warriors-inspired game. But you don't need the word, because they nail it. It is good. All the mechanics that are in Persona, the turn-based game, are here and present, and they work well. It's fantastic fantastic of an experience just to see the drastic change in gameplay and how well they they switch it while the gameplay is different everything else is the same the story structure is the same the cutscenes you come to expect for sona 5 are still there it's just one big adventure it was great to go on an adventure again with these characters that i adore i put 200 hours into both persona 5 and persona 5 some of my favorite games of all time to be able to go back and play it again was a delightful treat for me. The fact that it was good was great. Now, if I have to say anything bad about the game, to be fair, if you go into it expecting the same length as the RPGs, don't. It's about, for me, it was one-fourth the length, or yeah, about one-fourth of the length. It's kind of hard to have the same length in a different game genre, I assume. That was about my, yeah, the only thing that was bad is that it just wasn't as long, which I think that's a good complaint because that just means you're hungry for more. I had very little bad things to say about this. It was just such a pleasant experience. And I'm currently playing, at the time of this video, Persona 3 FES. And I can't wait for Atlas to release their next Persona game. They made me a huge fan of this series. So my fifth favorite game of 2021 was Persona 5 Strikers. Metroid Dread. Yes, Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread was a game that I wasn't going to play <laughs> originally. I was not going to play. I know. It's what? The fourth game on this list. It's funny how it works, right? This was not a game I was going to play, but. And I feel like I have to talk about this. The reason I played Dread was because the overall negativity that I saw it was getting on the internet from media outlets talking about pirating the game, people saying that the game was not worth its price. Those people and those negative comments got me to buy Dread. This was a game that I was not interested in. Word to the wise, you know, maybe that thing you're trying to push people away from might not be working. I don't know, but that's how I got to play Dread. The negativity on the internet got me to play it, and boy, am I glad I played it. This is a game genre. Metroidvania, Castlevania style games that I have completely written off. I have never been interested in these kind of games, ever. I have never had an interest in playing any kind of Metroid game that wasn't a Prime game. I had no interest in playing Super Metroid, Castlevania, because I thought I just wouldn't like them. And man, this is Dread just so good. It's just so good and addicting. It's mechanics and finding the items in the environment are just so much fun. The combat is intense. The new enemies in the game, I think it's Emma or Emmy with an I, I believe. They are so heart pounding inducing. When they're on the screen, they demand your presence and they put you in a quick time event and you literally have less than a sec to react to their move or you're dead. It is such an adrenaline rush when they're on the screen and you're like, no, 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 running away. It's so much fun. But all the abilities were just great. The way they did the map and how they interwove the different areas and stuff and how they would present you with pieces of an item or a puzzle that was just out of your reach because you didn't have the ability and you had to come back later. It was so cool. Like you needed a suit so you can go in the lava area so you wouldn't get burned. So you had to go back later and, you know, find it elsewhere and come back later. And then you needed an ice suit and then you needed this particular item. It was just so cool. And I was amazed by how big the map was but it was just great the boss battles were great now it's not the game with the biggest emphasis on storytelling constantly but the storytelling moments in the game when they're there are good i thought they were fantastic it was stylistic it was a lot of fun and i had a great time playing it i'm now a metroid fan <laughs> i'm a metroid fan i am looking very much forward to metroid prime 4 please nintendo Port Metroid Prime 1 through 3 to the Switch or do something with them. I can't wait for the next game. So coming in at number four was Metroid Dread. It was a great game. Coming in at number three, it's the last game on the list that I can say I was not going to play this game. And that is...
Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. I was originally not going to play this game, and I was also sick and tired of seeing the advertisement for this game prior to it coming out. Just Monster Hunter RPG did not interest me, even though I was very much interested in World and Rise. But I played the demo. They, there was a demo where it would take your progress into the main game. So I was like, you know what? Why not try out the demo? And those kind of demos are awesome. Because I played this and it completely changed my mind. I ended up buying the game and it was fantastic. I feel like Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin is a better Pokemon game than Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm just going to throw it out there. I had such a great time with this game going around and capture the monsters, raising them in their in the way the game does with the egg system, seeing the boss fights and what monsters they were going to be. It was so cool to see the moves that are in, you know, motion in the base game that are now turn-based abilities. It was so cool to be like, oh, okay, I wonder what Nagakuga ability this is going to be, like what move this is going to be and stuff like that. It was so cool. And there was a bunch of monsters in this game that I like never saw before because they were from previous games that I didn't play and stuff like that. It was just an amazing time. I had such a fun time playing this game. I ended up playing it for like 150 hours. I played it for so long. I thought the storyline was good. It's not the most interesting storyline in the world, and I don't think it's going to grip a lot of people. But I thought it was interesting enough for me to care about it, and it was just great. I had a good time. There's a lot of content in the game. You can play it online and co-op with a friend. Not from the beginning of the game, but once you get to a certain point, you can. The extra characters you play along with in the storyline are cool, and they all have different abilities. There's a whole heap and a lot of stuff for you to do. They supported it with post-game content for like a couple months. There was just so much stuff that this game offered. It was great. And it was all free. The post-game stuff. You didn't have to buy an expansion like Pokemon Sword and Shield or anything. And it was just great. They did such a good job. And a game that I just was not interested the first time. But I'm glad I played that demo. Because it was a fantastic experience. I would not sleep on Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. It is a good RPG, and that's my number three game. Shin Megami Tensai 5. Tensai 5 was a game that I was always looking forward to. While playing Persona, everybody who came into my comments told me that, hey, did you know that Persona 5 was a spinoff from Shin Megami? I heard that so many times that it made me curious about what Shin Megami was. So when they announced that Shin Megami 5 was going to come to the Switch, I was like, you know what? I'm going to play that one. It finally came out, and am I glad I played it? <laughs> this game is so addictive. It is such a good game. This is like adult Pokemon, pretty much. It's just great. You go around, you collect demons throughout the entire game. Its storyline is not as heavily focused and in your face as Persona, but it is there. And there is deep meaning to the story. I explored all the endings the game had to offer. We 100% of the compendium. We did all the side quests. We did all the storyline DLCs. I was stuck on the super boss in this game, the final super boss for like 20 hours i did three streams of it it was like it was such a great game it was so good the music is good the areas are cool the demon interactions are great seeing the different demons were cool it was just so neat to see demons that i saw from persona 5 new demons i never saw before and getting all the endings trying to understand the lore it was just a fantastic time and i'm so glad i got to finally play the game that persona the series that it was a spinoff from i got to see like the series it came from it was so good there was just so many things about it that was great now the lesser than great stuff i guess for some people would be the frame rate and stuff like that but i had an amazing time that was not a hamper for me playing it in a handheld mode was great playing it on dock was great shimmy got me tensai 5 for me was just a fantastic time I thought long and hard about this game because I played it towards the end of the year. I played, It was the last game I played in 2021. We started it in December, and I was thinking, is it high on my list because it was the last game, and you know, the games earlier in the year, you know, they're not as, you know, embedded in my mind because, you know, I may have forgot some things about them, and I'm like, no. 
I sat there and I looked at the list of the games I played and I was like, no, it deserves it. I had a blast with this. I recommend Shin Megami Tensei V if you have a Switch. You should play it. It's a great RPG. Now it's time <laughs> for my favorite game of 2021. If you have been around my stream, it's not going to shock you at all. It's a game that I have very little bad things to say about. I was looking very much forward to it, and it didn't disappoint. And that is... Tales of Arise. This was a game that I was looking forward to tremendously. This is my first Tales game in a series that has a bajillion of games. I wanted to play Tales with Tales of Symphonia back on the GameCube, but I never got around to doing it, and for some reason, the series slipped through the cracks for me. I just didn't hear about it for whatever reason. And Tales of Arise, I don't remember where I first saw it, but when I first saw it advertised, I was like, that game looks interesting and I want to play it. I always wanted to play this game. And I am so glad I did. Just like I said in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Tales of Arise's banter between characters and skits that they have in this game are so enjoyable. I went out of my way to get every last one in the game. <laughs> I wanted to explore the depth of all the characters and see everything they did in this game. I love the characters in this game. Every character that they made in this game. Their personal struggles. I just wanted to go on a journey with them. I was so happy to go on this journey with them throughout this game. The skits were great. The story was good. It had, it started off with this slavery stuff. I'm not going to dive too much into spoiler territory, but I was hooked on it. And I was like, oh, wow. And then what it morphed into, I was like, oh, wow, really? And there was a point to where I just gave up trying to figure out what the hell was going to happen. I was like, I'm just here for the ride because <laughs> I, I just couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. But I was having a blast the entire time. The gameplay did take me a while to get used to, but once I got used to it, I was hooked and I had a very, very fun time. There was one character in particular that I had a hard time getting used to and I ultimately did not, and that was Duh Halim. If you who is watching this video have made it this far, let me know in the comments below. Did you, when you played this game, if you did play it, did you like Duh Halim's gameplay style? I just couldn't make it work for me. Everybody else worked, she, everyone, Alfin, Law, everybody. I could not get Dahalim to work at all. <laughs> no matter how hard I tried, he was the hardest person to use for me. But I enjoyed his character. I enjoyed everything about this game. It's a beautiful game. The soundtracks are great. The side quests were amazing. It has fishing. <laughs> I'm guaranteed to love it if it has fishing. The fishing had a side quest. There was, it was just great. The bosses were great. They had personalities. Their characters were great. Their models are great. I just, I, I can gush about this game for so long. I can't wait to forget about this game in a couple years just so I can replay it again and it's like brand new to me. I absolutely adored Tales of Orion. And, oh, I, I can't wait to, for the next game. I've heard people say that Tales games go through a patch of rough games before they come out with another good one. I hope that's not true, but it was great. This was my favorite game of the year that released in 2021 by far, and I had an amazing time, which was Tales of Arise. That is going to be it for my favorite video games that were released or re-released in 2021. What did you think? Did we share any games? Did we have any games on my list that maybe you didn't enjoy as much, or were there games on your list that you enjoyed that maybe I didn't play? I am going to be having a game video coming out later that are going to be about the games that I wish I played in 2021, alongside with my favorite games overall and my least favorite games of 2021. I want to close with that 2021 for me was a great year in video gaming. There was a lot of games that came out that I enjoyed and a lot of them that didn't make this list. I ended up playing, I think, 70 plus video games, including games that were brand new and games that were replaythroughs of stuff. 
and it was a fantastic year for me and i am incredibly grateful to be able to have a hobby like this that i enjoy so much and that it has only been getting better and i really want to emphasize that because i see so much negativity from people and maybe it's because it's you know the internet or something or stuff but my time in gaming has only been getting better and i hope it has been for you as well I'd like to thank you for watching. If you've made it this far and you'd like to join me on my video game adventures live, I have a, <laughs> obviously a YouTube channel. I have a Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash Akamatsu if you would like to join us while I play these playthroughs live. Every game on this list was played over on my YouTube, is archived on my YouTube channel, but streamed over live. God, I'm so bad at that. We would love to have it if you'd like to join us. Uh, you can follow me over on Twitter if you want to, and also you can check out my Patreon if you would like to support my work here on YouTube. You're more than welcome to check those out. Special thanks to Doctor for being a Patreon over on Patreon for a while now for a couple years thank you so much for your support i appreciate it as always i like to thank you all for watching i hope you all have a wonderful day and i will see you all in the next one stay crunchy amigos